Fishing like a local isn't just about catching fish. It's about connecting with the environment and the people who call it home. It's about hearing the stories and traditions that have been passed down for generations and sharing unforgettable moments with the people you meet along the way. Fishing like a local is having an experience that stays with you forever. And with Fishing Booker, you can experience it too, no matter where you are. Discover your next adventure on Fishing Booker. This upcoming concert season will be all about the boots, and Tecovis is your stop for the best in Western style. Tecovis has seasonal and limited edition offerings this spring and summer, including men's and women's boots, apparel, hats, bags, and more. All Tecovis boots are made by hand in a time-honored tradition with timeless styles that are always on trend. And Tecovis has first wear comfort with little to no break-in period. It's hard to find this level of comfort paired with this level of style. Stop by your local Tecova store, have a complimentary drink or two, that's WCB style, and shop new styles. The smell of fresh leather and friendly staff are at your service. Many stores even have leather custom branding to make your boots truly personalized. And with regular live music and events, there's no in-store experience like it. If you can't make it into a store, just visit tecovas.com. That's T-E-C-O-V-A-S.com. They offer free shipping on all boots as well as free returns and exchanges and ship right to your door. Go to tecovas.com and find your new favorite pair of boots today. It's done. The goal of the year. Part of the past. The celebrations. Forgotten. The history. History. We're back to a blank slate. Clean ice. All that matters now is what happens next. The Stanley Cup playoffs. Eastern Conference Final begins Wednesday. Welcome back to the Survival and Basic Badass Podcast with Kevin and Chuck. Today we're going to talk home fire safety. Yes. Now, Super does boring, that mean right? that outside my fire department it's like fire safety week? Check your smoke detectors and are there free coloring books for everybody? Free coloring books for everybody. Guys outside, you got to supply your own crane. Corner. Yeah. Well, maybe it's not that week, but. It's the week the badasses tell you about what you can do to prepare your home for a little fire safety. All right. Let's start with talking about uh, smoke detectors. All right. When you get a smoke detector, you should basically take a take a magic marker and write the date you get it on there. All right. Now, a lot of them say... Like, I always break them apart trying to figure out how to change the battery. Yeah. It turns out most of them don't even have batteries anymore. Well, they have a battery, but it's but like can't. a built-in 10-year right. and then throw it and out. And when it's doing that, like, little beep every 15 seconds and you can't find it and you're going upstairs and downstairs, and then you finally find it. That's your smoke alarm. And you can't alarm. get the battery out, and you smash it with a hammer and it won't stop beeping. That's that could the one be because the about. kitchen's on fire. Because <laughs> my kid, my kid just experienced that where, oh, it keeps beeping, so I should take a broom handle and just keep smacking it, smash it, <laughs> and then eventually it'll stop. Because I thought it was so urgent, I stopped the noise. Mm. Not I put out the fire, put the fire out, call the fire department, get out of the house, mm-hmm. any of that. No, it's let me smash that to stop the beeping. Right. And then, oh, you should go buy a new smoke detector. Mm Mm-hmm. All right. Yeah. So that is an option. All right. But you should replace your detectors every 10 years. 10 years. Your batteries every one year. Okay. And I try and do, with my smoke detectors, I try and do all the batteries at once. If one starts beeping, I know it's going to be not long before the next one starts beeping. That that sounds accurate. And some of them might be dead enough that they don't even beep. Now, another thing, I think... Maybe they're doing away with the batteries because they're all freaking nine volts, and like they even make nine volt batteries anymore. Right. I have a stockpile of nine volts, though. Yeah, you were I'm, ready. I'm a. I'm a. Uh, you were ready for Y2K, and, for, yeah. and you um, had your nine that's volts. That's always my thing. All um, right. Now you want to mount it near your ceilings. 
because smoke rises. So they say like outside the bedrooms is the key. Right, outside the bedrooms, you know, right at the top, you know, right at the top of the wall. Um, In the basement, I have them up on the ceilings directly, just right in the into the upstairs floor. Um, Let's talk about fire extinguishers. A lot of people don't have fire extinguishers in their house. And a lot of people don't have them and don't know how to use them. Yes. Uh, So, fire starts. Pull your pin. uh, Point it towards the base of the fire. The base of the fire is always Mm -hmm. the key. And in a sweeping motion, extinguish the fire. Now, there's three different letters that might be on my fire extinguisher. Oh, no, there's five now. Five. There's I it was five letters. C. Right? No, no. You thought that. That's not anymore. All right. What's hey, going on? That's hey. the that's the like a wood fire. Wood paper. Yep. Paper. Anything like that. You can extinguish that with a water fire extinguisher. All right. Don't get a water fire extinguisher because they're not for, good for a whole lot. They're good for except wood for wood. paper. Yeah. And I mean, if a person's on fire, not great perfect. for grease. Not mm-hmm. so great with electricity. What do they call that in the Navy when I was taking the fireman's course, the screaming alpha, when a person's <laughs> on fire? A for alpha. That's it. Nice. Uh, class B fire. Bravo. Right. That's gas, uh, solvents, grease, oil, things like liquids that'll spread. You don't spread. want to splatter up on you and no. burn you with grease. You don't want to so, use yeah. water on that. Um, you can use uh, CO2 or... Uh, Dry chemical okay. extinguisher. Uh, class C fire. That's an electrical fire. It's an electrical. Right. right. Now, a lot of them, you can buy an extinguisher that's A, B, and C. And C. And we'll cover you for everything. And they're good for all Because the other two letters are kind of BS. Now, tell me about these other two letters. Well, all right. D is combustible metals. Ooh. Not really a thing. No. Unless you store like large amounts of mercury near or your you're fireplace, or on the forest stall, and one of those planes catch the on fire. The forest stall is exactly the one. That's yep. where they were like, "Break out the D fire yeah, extinguisher," because it'll just keep burning underwater. It'll just it'll just keep burning. Turns you out need the a planes dry with, chemical. I don't know what it was. It magnesium, motors magnesium or something. Yep. Yeah, yeah. I said mercury earlier. It was magnesium. It was magnesium. Yep. But either way, just push those planes off into just the water. Just shove them right off the side. Uh, that's a dry chemical uh, extinguisher is what okay. you need for that. And the the fifth letter is K for kitchen fire. Now, I don't know why they added this one because it's basically like ABC. your grease, you know, yeah. like a grease fire in your pan or something like that, which is like it's a basically B. a B, yeah. you know. But whatever. They say to extinguish that with baking soda. Yes. I actually store my baking soda over my stove. I think so I, I do won't as be well. able to get to it. No. So that's just maybe I should re- relocate my baking no, soda. No, but I want to see if my microwave catches on fire. Is that correct? That's correct. Good okay. thinking. I like the way you're thinking. See? Mhm. Uh but you can use a dry chemical extinguisher on all the fires. Okay. They're a lot more expensive though. They are, but I mean, you're still in that like twenty nine dollar neighborhood for a little one. Mm-hmm. You know, when you go to like Sam's Club or right, something, right? Might even be two for twenty nine. And if I, you've I got your know. if you've got your little extinguisher there, you can stop a big problem before it gets big. That's the thing you got to catch it early. Mm-hmm. And uh, you know, most of the time when a, a house is destroyed by a fire, it's not the fire that destroys the house. It's the 15 fire trucks that show up and hose it down with 50, thousands of gallons, gallons of water. Of water. Right. Yeah. They just keep spraying it and spraying it, and your entire house is just a, a wet mess. Now, another thing they talk about in the schools or, or when you get the fireman comes and gives you the coloring books, mm-hmm. they talk about having an escape plan right. for your house. Mm-hmm. Now, how many of you out there actually talk to your kids and were like, you know, I know you're like, oh, stop staring at your iPhone or whatever. Right. But did you ever say, hey, if there's a fire, where are you going to go? Mm-hmm. What are you going to do? You know? Well, that's number one is is know your route. Know your route. So it turns out we have a law here in America. Mm-hmm. That America. It's okay. Relax. Yeah. No, nah, I get excited. I'm sorry. I'm super patriotic. I just what saw I an say? eagle fly across the room and <laughs> green so when i said that so the thing is you uh all rooms in america all bedrooms have to have two exits 
Right, by law. Now, that could be a door and a window, but it has to be a person can get out of Right, window. escape the escape from two different directions. Now, if your it, hallway's on fire. It can be on the third story, and that still counts. Yeah. But, you know, whatever. Make sure your window's open. A lot of windows... Uh, of shut. older houses, they're just painted shut. You can't, and you can't open them. Tell your kids, you know, if they're going to burn to death, it's all right to just throw a chair through that window. Right. You can smash a window. You just out. break that shit out. Right? Yeah. You do what you got. House is going to burn down anyway at that point. But maybe if your kids in like the third floor uh, bedroom, maybe you set up some kind of ladder or kind of way for them right. to work it out. And if you're on the second floor, I don't know if this is a. I mean, this is probably good advice on the third floor too. But you're going to get still get fucked up. But if you're on the second floor, you hang. You hang, right? You get out your wi- out the window. You hang from the sill and, and just then hang drop. on there as long as you can. Right. And you know, maybe <laughs> maybe will someone will pull you yet. back up when they put the fire yeah. out. Who That's knows? not exactly what you were going for. All right, stay low to the ground All right. when you're escaping a fire. Heat rises. The smoke inhalation is is really bad. The hot particulates. Uh, it's get a lot in your of mouth. Bad shit when you burn all the crap in your house. Right. You can you can if you can get like a, a t shirt or something that's wet and hold it over your mouth, that'll filter out it some really of makes the smoke. A, a decent amount of difference. Mm-hmm. Um check your doors before you open them. Uh feel the 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 um doorknob. You know, if it's hot, you might not want to open that. You might want to go for the window. Turns Flames out coming underneath oxygen the door. Go in yep. there. No. We've all seen the movie Backdraft. Backdraft. There could be a puddle of gasoline yeah, in there. If you see like the smoke and the flames start to come out the bottom of the door, and then it sucks back in. Yes, you're in trouble. Don't <laughs> that open was it. Totally, that movie uh-huh. Backdraft. That's a no go right there. Or what was that show that everybody watched uh, after the Super Bowl? This is us. I don't know anything One about of these, that. Something. It was like a year or two ago. I don't know. Somehow, the bad things happen to the guy. Oh, uh, and the fire. Talk about. Well, you're not supposed to tip. Oh, ever. I didn't want to ruin it for That it. might be a spoiler. Uh, excuse so, me. Hey, if you're watching that show, don't listen to Kevin. All right? Just so <laughs> you know. Right. It oh. is like two years old. I think you're all right. All right. I wasn't going to watch but it But it anyway, was kind so of a big right. deal for people. They were a little mm-hmm. worried about, how did he die? Oh, my God. All right. Anyway, a little off task. Right. But now, they say f- avoid the stairs because it works as like a chimney with all the heat and the smoke going up. Hmm. Now, obviously, that's a serious fire at that point. Yeah. Um, but you know, do you, you know, try and put it out before it gets started. But if you find yourself in a, and actually this happened to a friend of mine was talking to me about this. They were staying at their parents, uh, cabin. Okay. They had the grill going outside, turned it off. The grill malfunctioned though. What? And, uh, even though they turned the gas off or they turned the grill off and not, not the gas. And it was still burning, and then somehow combusted and caught the siding of the house on fire. The right. house on fire. They were upstairs taking a shower together. <laughs> they weren't married. Yeah. Well, this is <laughs> this is saucy stuff. He went outside to get you know whatever whatever it was marijuana, choice. and he's yeah some sort of reefer. <laughs> Maybe I don't know. I don't know. But if they're having I mean, premarital sex together, right? Yeah, exactly. Jesus. Uh, so he saw the fire, and at that point, it already, you know, was going up was going side. pretty serious. Yeah. And so he ran in, grabbed her. They ran out. The high, the house just burned the fuck down. He didn't grab a class A uh, fire extinguisher. She was stuck outside with nothing but a towel. Woo! Which I mean. You know, fornication has consequences. Yeah. You know, I think that's God sending him a message uh-huh. right there. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yep. I see what he did there. Yeah. So here's the thing. Actually, I can see how that could happen. Mm-hmm. Turns out I'm a bit of a griller myself. And it's been known that if you have like a fatty steak or something like that, that grease drips down and those flames can get pretty hot in the grill. Mm-hmm. And. A lot of us on the uh, lazier end of the spectrum um, keep our grills pretty close to the house, um, mm-hmm. kind of right outside the door. So you can walk yeah. out. Do I a finally grilling. moved mine out a good way. a couple but... feet away. I think mine's, I moved it away from the siding, but it's still right in front of the deck. Yeah, it's right next to the. There's a deck railing issue. The, the that wood, I may have. Su- wood so, deck. So, anyway, 
on several occasions I've come out and found the grill to have flames coming out the back, even though it's closed, coming up maybe a foot high. Mm -hmm. And one time I did come out and some kind of black char marks on the deck and (laughs) flames, you know, a good foot and a half kind of up the side of my deck. And I'm like, oh, shit. (laughs) That's a fire. And then I started, then I moved it like six inches out. I'm right. like, yeah, now you're safe. I should be a little more careful. You know, whatever. So all you firemen out there might be like, what the fuck? Mm-hmm. But, you know, hey, teach us on, you know? Mm-hmm. That, you know, hey. So that's where I can leave that story. But it does happen. And on the vinyl siding, it just burns that shit right up. That plastic yeah. burns. They, like, yeah, once it catches, man, that stuff just goes. It really can just right up the side of the house. So mm-hmm. something to be aware of. Maybe don't leave that grill unattended. I'm not saying that's what I would do, but I'm saying that would be good if you cared about your house and your family and that mm-hmm. kind of thing. Yeah, that kind of nonsense. Stop, drop, and roll. Yeah? When you catch on fire. But not with gasoline. Is bit, well, I mean, you still do it, but it really it doesn't go, go out. out when you have <laughs> gas all over yourself. Yep. I actually just built a pond in the backyard. Just so you can run and jump so in So I can run and jump in fire. it, yep. That's smart. Mm-hmm. Because I know, sure, pouring gasoline on a fire, possibly not as smart as it sounds. Yeah. And it always happens. When you put gas on an already burning fire, it's always way worse than you think it's going to be. Well, you always think, like. It's just a super bad idea. I don't see any flames now, so it's pretty much out. So it's all right. I I should be good. And then just. And then it goes right up. Right. And, and then like, you, have no, you have no eyebrows. You have no eyebrows. So somehow the gas ends up all over my pants. Okay. So I'm like, well, I'm smart. Stop, drop, and roll. Fuck that shit. Dude, it just was like they were burning. <laughs> and I'm like, and so it ended up I had to like put my hands on it and just snuff it out. So now you have burnt feet and, and hands. I'm yelling at the kid who, I'm like, I may have told this story, but whatever. I'm like, go get your freaking hose, whatever. Yeah, it won't reach. I can't pull it. I don't know. I don't want to stop watching. <laughs> Super entertaining. And, um, <laughs> the entertainment yeah. value is huge. So I'm patting out the fire. It goes out. But I have no hair on my arms at that point. Mm. And, you know, it's a little uncomfortable. And I'm like, yeah. Oh, I can see that. That's awkward. And I'm like, that's it. I'm not doing that anymore. I also have lit myself on fire at one point. I'm not going to get into that story because it's kind of <laughs> embarrassing. <laughs> it turns out. It involves drinking. Well, uh, that's always that's always the case. There's, I don't know if you I, remember. I was a, not like a grown-ass man with kids, though. So. Oh, okay. Well, yeah, but I started having kids young. So, All right. you know. All right. There was, I don't know if you remember, there was a comedian, Chris Titus or whatever, mm-hmm. had a show, Titus, whatever, yep. for a short time. And so he had these, um, I don't know, I was listening to a podcast or something, and he's telling stories of comedy, whatever. Mm -hmm. And he's like, yeah, I was at this kegger and whatever, and I passed out because I was drunk standing next to the fire and just went both hands right into the fire Mm -hmm. and, you know, on the coals. And he's like, I had big bandages. <laughs> and I'm like, ooh. So that's the kind yeah, of shit you want to avoid. I actually once met a man with no face. Because he also fell in a that fire? Was, that's why he had a seizure and fell into the fire. Who hasn't that seen that awful. play out? It was awful. Um, so stop, drop, and roll. Uh, you're going to want to uh, shield your eyes and face, eyes and mouth, uh, with one hand when you're stop, dropping, and rolling. If you're going to try and put a fire out like somebody else is on fire and you're going to try and smother it with a coat or a okay. blanket or something, you want to smother it downwards yes. instead of upwards towards their face. Yes, I've heard that can be a problem. All right. So that pretty much uh, completes the the, the fire end of fire, this. Uh, fire safety. Right. All right. Right. Let's talk about, I want to talk real quick about so a, a news, news story item? that right. I just read. Uh, this you... was yesterday, came out. Uh, Lake Mercer. Uh it's a lake in Antarctica. All right. That's 1067 meters uh deep through ice. There's there's 1067 meters of ice between the top uh to when you get to the the bot the to the water. They drilled all the way down cuz they thought this would be a good idea. 
Smart. Drilled all the way down and started pulling up mud from the bottom. They found uh, some sort of spiders and what they scientifically, in scientific terms, what they said was crustacean type things. Mm. Whatever that means. That's lobster. They also I mean, said I mean, something it... that might be a worm. Nice. They also found the thing. We've all seen the, the movie. We're in Antarctica when they dig up the thing and it's an alien and it makes your body split into different people. This is Kurt Russell. And then, yeah, about. and the only way to kill it is with fire. I'm just saying, maybe that's not a good idea. Scientists do scientific things, whatever. But, you know, I still believe in the thing. Aliens are frozen in that lake. The end of the world is coming. So, just a heads up. Watch out for the thing. Don't trust anybody that doesn't have uh, doesn't have it, uh, have fillings in their teeth. That's how they could tell. Really, that was the key. Because mm-hmm. they couldn't replicate the fillings. Smart. All right. So with that, another uh, amazing episode. Kevin uh, wants you to shoot him an email if you have great ideas for a podcast. That's right. Well, a podcast episode. That relates to all things survival. Mm -hmm. Share your knowledge, anything. You want to tell us about your favorite episode? You know, in about a month, month and a half, we're going to be coming up on our 200th episode. Ooh. About two months, I think. Should we do like email questions? I'm wondering if listener questions. Now, it's still a little bit ways out. We'll let you know when it's time to start sending those in, but start thinking about it. Mm-hmm. Let that stew around a little bit. <clears throat> right, and if you have hate mail that you want to send about the podcast we did last week about uh, Washington, we've gotten a couple so far. We have gotten some hate Love mail. the hate mail. Kevin does love the hate mail. Mm-hmm. Send it over to us at preppingbadass at gmail.com. All right. Now, what I've never figured out is why, if you hate something, are you listening to the podcast? Why wouldn't you be like, these guys are a couple of cucks? Is that what the guy cucks, called us? Yes. Um, somebody called us Abbott and Costello. Nice. Uh, but I think they meant that in a negative way. Oh. Oh, um, oh okay. Yeah, losers. Uh, Jersey Shore sounding. Yes, I do remember the Jersey Shore. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, I mean, I'm down for all that shit. I think it's great. I love it. And I, I will evil, even email you back in a polite manner. Now, would I be more like the situation or more like Snooky? I think you're. I think we're both kind of Snooky. <laughs> oh, it's a Let's sad be day honest. for America. We both want to be the situation, but we're both Snooky. <laughs> but we're both Snooky, huh? All right. Well, Jersey Shore, you know. Mm-hmm. All right. Yeah. And uh, I think, you know, with a f- couple of fist bumps, we're going to wrap this episode up. Sounds right. So with that, stay safe, and we will talk to you guys on Saturday.